This is John Coley with DiscountJuicers.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. Now it really concerns me when I get an email from a customer that says, Hey John, I bought the Omega Vert Juicer and I'm trying to juice some stuff, but it's just making too much pulp and it's not working right. So then in that case, what I do is I suggest that they watch a few videos that I produced. Uh, one's entitled, uh, Best Practices Juicing in the Vertical Auger Juicers. Another one is what they don't tell you or what they don't explain in the instruction manual on the Omega Vert. So both those videos generally will help somebody to uh, follow the proper procedures to get the most and the best out of their juicer and to minimize the pulp and to be able to juice the most things possible. That being said, the Omega Vert juicer is a certain style of juicer and I like it for a few reasons. Number one, it, for me it's very convenient, it works really well and it uses a wide variety of produce. So things from leafy greens to hard vegetables and even actually does a really good job at fruit in my opinion. It kind of does it all but because it does it all, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily good or the best at any one of those things. So for example, if you want to juice a lot of leafy greens, then I would recommend something like the Omega 8004 or 8006 machine that's going to juice leafy greens better but not going to juice fruit as well. So with every juicer there's pros and cons. I have another excellent video that compares the Vert to the Omega 8004, 8006 series juicers on YouTube so you can do a YouTube search for that to watch that video where I uh, go into detail about these two machines and compare them side by side. But anyways, today what we're going to do is we're going to juice an actual ju juice recipe that a customer is trying to juice and wasn't getting good results. So I said, hey, email me what you're, gonna, what you're juicing exactly. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it here and share with you my technique for juicing it so that you can get the best results in the Omega Verts. So first, let me go ahead and introduce her recipe and what she juices. So the first thing she said is she juices uh, four to five kale leaves. So I actually have uh, four kale leaves. These are actually uh, called uh, red Russian kale. Nice variety, nice and sweet. Uh, juices up really good. Next she uses about two to three handfuls of spinach. So we have two to three handfuls of the uh, organic spinach here. Next she says she uses about a half a stalk of celery. So uh, I don't have a nice long stalk of celery so I have two smaller pieces of celery. hope that equates about to what she uses. And next she says she uses one large cucumber, so I got one of the largest cucumbers I could find. This is an English cucumber. And uh, next thing she said she uses is one whole head of romaine lettuce. And that's what's right here, one head of organic romaine. Next she said she uses one whole lemon, and I have a Meyer lemon. These are actually sweeter than regular lemons. And then she says she uses one apple. And then she uses a one inch piece of ginger, so I have about a one inch piece of ginger right there. And then she says sometimes she'll add in additional greens. So what I have here today is I have about four more leaves of just some standard uh, greens from my garden. I think they're some collards and maybe uh, broccoli leaves and whatnot. So that's what we're going to juice. And to me, this looks like it's a little bit heavy on the greens. I mean, once again, the romaine's a leafy green. The spinach and the kale and whatnot are leafy greens. And there's not a lot of, like, oomph or fiber, hard fiber, such as think when you think hard fiber, think of a carrot. A carrot is what the vert really needs to help push all that stuff through. So what I'd like to do is adjust this recipe. If I was going to juice or wanted to juice this, I would kind of add a few things. So if you don't want to add carrots, what I would do is I'd add a bunch more celery. So instead of two, you know, uh, pieces of celery here or one stalk, I'd juice like pretty much like the whole head. And you're going to see how we have to prepare the celery so that it juices properly or you'll get terrible results. In a second, we've got to chop it up. Another thing I might do is add more cucumber. Cucumber, once again, is going to help push stuff through the machine. Uh, things like leafy greens, if you're juicing them straight, won't actually move through the machine because there's a little pulp flap in the machine. And the leafy greens can't get by the pulp flap without something behind it pushing on it to get those greens ejected. So then you, what's going to happen is they're going to get stuck in the machine and you're going to get a pulp your juice. The romaine definitely is, you know, once again, another leafy green. It's going to kind of work through a little bit better because it has this fibrous stalk that's not too stringy. So that's good. Once again, the lemon 
kind of soft so it might not push through too well. I got a nice firm apple and of course the ginger is actually going to work really well. But there's a lot of strings in the ginger so we may want to pre-cut this up a little bit. Once again on all the greens I definitely recommend that you slice it up and we'll do this one step at a time to show you guys how I'm going to do that. But before you even assemble and get all the produce you want to juice it's very important before you even start juicing is produce selection in the Omega Vert or any juicer you're using. If you're getting like old produce that's like wilty and spoiled and kind of like not firm and crisp, it's not going to juice well. So make sure you get nice, firm, fresh produce. Once again, on lemons and the apple, you want to get it as firm as possible. If the lemon's nice and soft, it's going to kind of mush and not really juice. Same thing with the apple, very important. Same thing also with the cucumber. You want to squeeze that cucumber. And uh, if you can squeeze it and indent it, then the cucumber is kind of getting old and it's not going to juice too well. You want to get one that's nice, hard, and firm for the best results. On the celery, once again, you just want it nice and hard and firm. You don't want it soft or old either. So besides produce selection, the next thing that's paramount is proper preparation of the produce. So what we're going to do here is we're going to prepare all the produce to be juiced in the Omega Vert how I believe they should be a process for the best results. So what we're going to do here is clear off the table of some of the things real quick. So the first thing we're going to prepare that's the easiest is the uh, cucumber. We're going to cut off the top there and we're going to simply take the cucumber and we're going to cut it lengthwise into force. And uh, I did a pretty good job. Because this is so long, we're going to uh, put another cut into it. So now we just made like eight little pieces out of it. So they're forced and then they're cut in a half. So now we have our little cucumber logs to feed in. Now this is actually important because what's going to happen is you're going to rotate, which is another important thing to do in the Omega Vert, rotate the produce. So you're not going to put all kale and then all, all cucumber and all apple. You're going to put one piece of each thing at a time and then keep cycling through it until you're done with all your produce for the best results. So that is the uh, cucumbers properly cut up. Next we're going to take the ginger and on the ginger once again we're just going to cut pieces off because the ginger can be very fibrous and actually stick up and get stuck in the outlet port. So we cut that up into small pieces and we're going to have this in little different areas of the cutting board and we're just going to pick one, juice it, pick a piece of the other, juice it work all the way down juicing different pieces and different kinds of produce until we're out of produce. Next, very important, especially on the celery, you want to dice this stuff up. So I'm going to put it on the cutting board and just kind of slice it up. We're going to take a lot of cuts to do this. And I'm cutting this, man, like an eighth of an inch or just a little bit larger. The smaller you can get it, the better. I used to recommend like two inch pieces, but if you do two inch pieces, you're going to get in trouble. I'll call that the terrible twos. The terrible two inch pieces of celery. They're going to, it's going to jam up the uh, Omega Vert juicer. So you can see, you know, I'm pre-cutting, but this is one of the things you have to do in the Omega Vert for the best results. Of course, if you don't want to pre-cut, you can purchase another juicer that you won't have to pre-cut, but then you're probably going to have to push the produce into the juicer to feed it in. And I'd rather pre-cut than sit there with the pusher trying to push stuff in. All right, so we got this cut up, and you can see, I mean, this is the size of the uh, celery pieces that we're wanting to cut up. So now that I got all the celery cut up, we're just going to move that over to a separate area of the cutting board. So it's nice and laid out like a little recipe. Uh, next thing we got here is the spinach. So pretty much we don't have to do much to the spinach. We're just going to kind of move that pile. Once again, this is about two to three handfuls of spinach. Just going to move that over into this area, get out the way there. Uh, next on your leafy greens, it's very important on your leafy greens to properly prepare them for the best results. Much like the celery, leafy greens have the stems and most people don't eat the stems, uh, but you can juice them. But if you're going to juice your stems, which I would recommend you do, you need to pre-cut them. So much like the celery, uh, you need to go down the line and chop it up. I mean, if we don't pre-cut, what happens is we could break this. And you can see, I mean, these strings, literally strings in the stems of the greens are going to jam up the machine and you're going to get a pulpy juice and it's not going to work properly. 
So let's see, what I'm going to do here is just uh, basically align all the greens in a white, one nice stack. And then I'm just going to go down the line and chop it all up just like I did the celery. So we got a nice uh, stack of the greens here. And then sometimes what I like to do is I like to take this and kind of roll it up like a burrito as tight as I can. Line it up on the cutting board there and then I'm just going to go down the line and make once again small little pieces of the greens including the stem. So right now I'm just cutting the stem into small pieces much like I cut that celery and just working my way down. And once again this is eighth inch pieces. So these are relatively small pieces. And then once again, as you cut down, you're still cutting the stem because there's still stem, but we're also literally, uh, you know, slicing up the greens as well. And this will make the uh, Omega Vert more effective at juicing when you can help it break up some of the pieces. Once again, the Omega Vert doesn't have a sharp gear in there. There's no teeth or there's no cutting blade. There's just the auger that's slow running, so it's going to maximize your amount of nutrition, but there's no teeth to cut stuff up. So by cutting stuff up before you feed it in the machine, you're helping it out and it's just going to make it work that much better. Alright, so you can see here we've easily uh, sliced this up. Once again, we're going to take this and put it on a little pile on our cutting board here. So now we have uh, all the different pre-cut uh, piles of produce. Hey, pre-cut piles of produce. Say that five times fast. That's like a tongue twister. Alright, so the lemon on the lemon, you know, it's very easy. I'm just going to quarter it. So I cut it in half, and then I just cut it in half again. And if you want, you know, you could cut it into eighths. That's probably not too necessary, but, you know, whatever. As long as the lemon fits in. Lemons are fairly easy to juice in the vert. Now, if your lemon does contain seeds, they can be put through the Omega Vert Juicer. In the instruction manual to the vert, it says, don't put any seeds in. That's just as a precaution. But anything like lemon seeds, orange seeds, apple seeds, pear seeds, all those small seeds you can definitely put in the machine. Even things like cherry pits can be put in the machine, but no other pits or anything else larger than a cherry pit. So don't be trying to juice olives. That's not going to work. You know, no peach pits. Anything larger than a cherry pit must be removed or you're going to damage the machine actually. So there we got all the lemons cut up into nice small little segments. Next, we're going to take the apple, and, you know, I just like to cut the apple up so that it fits in the machine. Let's see, I'm going to do one cut, two cuts, three cuts, four cuts, five cuts, and how about a six cut right there? Six cuts on the apple just so that we have pieces that fit in, then we'll call that a day. Now, on the romaine, you know, you probably don't have to pre-cut that like we did with the other greens. You may want to, but you know what, I'm not. I'm just going to probably peel off a couple leaves at a time, like two leaves at a time, and shove that down in there. Uh, you know, the romaine, we could break this off, and it doesn't really have any strings, uh, you know, too bad in there that's going to be still stuck. So the vert should be able to handle that without a problem. Now, let's talk about recipe adjustment. So I talked about that a little bit earlier. So if I was to do this recipe, I might add another cucumber and a lot more celery this is pretty uh, high in greens. I might also add some more apples. You know, juicing an extra apple or some extra cucumber or celery will definitely help this recipe out. But that being said, we're going to see what we can get the Omega Vert to do uh, with this exact recipe. So, without further ado, let's turn this machine on. The Omega Vert runs at a slow 80 RPMs, which maximizes nutrition and uh, basically literally squeezes out all the juice out of the produce. So what you want to start off first with is you want to remember your leafy green should always be juiced first and then you want to follow it by something kind of hard and fiber. So the hard and fibrous things that we have a little bit of are some uh, celery and uh, maybe the cucumber and the apples are going to be those things that help push the greens through. And to a lesser extent the romaine may help push through some of the other leafy greens. So by far we're going to take the spinach first because that's definitely the softest. And gonna have the hardest time to actually get pushed through the machine on its own. The other thing you're noticing is that I'm not using the pusher to push things in. If you're using the pusher to push things in, guess what? You're probably pushing things too fast in the Omega Vert. You want to just feed things in at a nice slow pace. And once again, this is a slow juicer, not a fast juicer. You don't want to cram stuff up in there. It's like you cramming stuff in your mouth 
if your mouth is already full of chewing stuff. And that's how the vert works. So now that we put the spinach in there, I'm going to put uh, some cucumber in there, but just enough to push the, uh, the spinach in there. Now you can see it's starting to get juice and some of the juice dripping out. And I didn't juice even all that cucumber. I'm saving some of it. Next, we're going to go ahead and put in some greens. Now that we put the spinach and the greens in with not much else, now it would probably be a good time to put a cucumber to help push those leafy greens through the machine. Next, I'm going to follow that by a small piece of apple, which helps stuff push, push it through. And then now a piece of ginger dropped in the machine. Next, since we haven't juiced the romaine yet, let's go ahead and... Uh, juice some of that romaine. Once again, we're just taking a few leaves off and going to kind of fold it up so that we can fit it in the feed chute and uh, push it in there. Oftentimes I like to put that in and put it with a slice of cucumber. So we're going to stick the cucumber in there to help push that romaine in there and let it chunk off a couple pieces of the uh, cucumber on the bottom to get it kind of free moving. Next, we haven't put that lemon in there yet, so now we're going to drop that lemon in there. And now the other thing to pay attention to is you want to be always watching that pulp outlet chute. If it actually ever stops, if pulp ever stops flowing out of the outlet chute, then you got some issues. And your issues are that it's jammed up because maybe you didn't pre-cut stuff properly. So if, if, if juice is coming out for a significant amount of time and no pulp is coming out, then you should probably stop, clean the machine, and start over. Now that being said, as long as pulp is coming out, even if it's really slow and even if it's a small little stream, you're good to go and you can continue to juice. Next, let's go ahead and put in some more spinach because by far the spinach and the, uh, the greens, the kale, are the hardest things that to be juicing today in the Omega Vert because the Vert doesn't like straight greens. It definitely needs something behind the greens to push it out. So once we put the spinach in, we'll take a small handful of the greens, including the kale and the collard greens, push that in there, and then we want to follow that with this uh, cucumber here. And once again, we're going to let the machine work and not just dump this in immediately. Because once again, if pulp is coming out, that means the machine still has the stuff in there that is really squeezing all the juice out and it takes its time, so we need to take some time. So now you can hear it chunking up that cucumber and more juice coming out and the pulp is still slowly moving out. So that's only a good thing. Next, we're going to put in a larger piece of the apple there, trying to help push stuff through. Follow that by a piece of the ginger. I think uh, next we're going to go ahead and put some of that romaine in. Romaine's a nice thing to add to your juices. Many times you can purchase romaine hearts for relatively inexpensive. And actually that's what these are, romaine hearts. So we're going to go ahead and put these romaine hearts in there. Now you can really see we're getting some juice come out. And you know what? I'm catching the juice today in a little Pyrex measuring cup and I'm using a strainer basket. Because if you don't want the pulp in your juice, then you're going to want to use a strainer basket or a sieve that you can buy at a local Target or Walmart. You know, they sell for a few bucks and this is going to really help you take out that pulp if you don't like the pulp in your juice. So we just did the romaine. Next, let's go ahead and follow that by a lemon. Oh man, and we got lots of cucumbers left too. So let's go ahead and take a whole piece of cucumber and uh, push that in the machine. And let that kind of flush through and let some of that pulp come out. Once again, I still got my eye on the pulp chute. And, you know, while pulp is coming out and it's about that wide, literally, it's moving out really slow, the whole thing is that it's still moving out. So that's definitely a good thing. Let's see, we're not really juicing too much uh, celery because I don't have a lot, so I've been using it sparingly because celery will really help push stuff through that machine there. So we're going to go ahead and dump that in there. How about another small piece of ginger at the same time? Uh, looks like we got some more spinach. Let's go ahead and put some spinach in there. Let that operate, and always after the spinach, I like to follow up with some kale and then probably some, uh, some cucumber here. So we'll use a small piece of cucumber. And we'll follow that with a piece of apple. So as you can see, I'm kind of rotating what I'm putting in. I'm not just feeding all the kale, then all the spinach. That, you're going to actually end up with a disaster. I haven't put a piece of lemon in for a while, so we're going to put a piece of lemon in. As you can see, the pulp's uh, coming out. And you know, the pulp on the Omega Vert is actually fairly dry. 
this is a fairly efficient juicer and I like you know that you pretty much don't have to use the pusher you just drop stuff in there and it juices it no problem uh, let's see next we're gonna go ahead once again put a few uh, pieces of romaine in there let's go ahead and take two pieces there and uh, push that down in the feeding chute romaine is kinda like for juicing in the vert it's kinda like halfway between a leafy green and halfway between that carrot that's gonna help push stuff through the other thing you might want to do is if you want to juice some carrots that'd be a good addition to this juice to kinda add in a carrot after the greens when you're juicing juice the greens then a carrot juice some other stuff then a carrot the carrot always helps push all the pulp through the machine so that it will actually work better for you if you want to juice carrots now if you don't that's where you know you'd want to use some more celery or cucumbers or apples which will kind of work to do the same thing but not quite as well so we're gonna go ahead and put a handful of uh, celery in there and we're gonna follow that by a cucumber and once again I'm not just dumping everything in really fast I'm kinda of letting the machine work for a little bit before I actually d uh, drop in the next piece of produce so that's the cucumber there and yes our pulp is still flowing out ever so slowly next we're gonna go ahead and put some more uh, celery in there the celery is gonna help clear out that chute and get the pulp moving out again hopefully and you can see our pulp still coming out once again the pulp ejection port is like that wide and literally at this time like about half that width or less than half the width is coming out I mean this is coming out in a small stream I mean this is how thin it is so I mean even if it's coming out that thin nothing to worry about it's still coming out and that's what's really important some people might say the juicer looks like it's pooping <laughs> Think about it though, after all a juicer pretty much works like us, I mean we would eat food and out one end comes the fiber and one end comes the liquid and that's what the juicer's doing. The juicer pre-breaks down the food for you so you don't have to, so you get the maximum utilization and the maximum nutrition out of those vegetables. Many people's digestive systems may be compromised due to maybe eating the incorrect foods for so long and that's why juicers in my opinion can be so beneficial to your health alright so you can see here man we're getting a lot of juice here we're up to 500 milliliters about half a liter we got a lot of you know uh, pulp and uh, some foam in the uh, in the little sieve here that's quite normal that's quite alright next let's go ahead and help flush that through with an apple all right, so now we're just going to scoop up all this mixture into one big pile. We're probably going to feed that stuff in at the end here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the machine off, and I'm going to show you guys what's going on here. So we got a lot of juice, and we got this strainer cup, and you can see the strainer cup. I'm basically uh, straining out all the juice that's going into the collection cup below it, and sometimes the strainer cup actually gets uh, filled with pulp, so I like to rotate the uh, juice and the foam that's in the strainer cup to a different area of the sieve that hasn't gotten clogged up yet and it's uh, separating all the juice out in there and keeping all the pulp and fiber in here so you don't have to drink it if you don't want to once again there's nothing wrong with drinking the extra pulp if you don't mind it it's only like a taste thing some people don't like to taste the pulp some people do I mean whatever you like to do if you don't like the pulp I mean it's very simple to buy a simple couple dollar strainer to strain it out now if you don't want to eat the pulp but you want to get more utilization out of the pulp what I like to do at this point almost near the end is I'll just take all the pulp take it back up to the uh, feed in inlet chute there and I'll tap my strainer basket uh, you know and get all that pulp because some of that pulp still mixed in with the juice and I'll just tap it all back in the machine it's slowly trickling into the machine and then I'm gonna, you know, I turn the machine off, of course. We're gonna go ahead and put the strainer basket back down in there and uh, turn this machine on and just go ahead and juice the rest. This way it's gonna try to, you know, get some of the extra pulp out and some of that juice back in. Plus it cleans out your strainer basket for the last bit of juicing you're gonna do. So I just got that last bit. Here's another handful going into the machine. I mean that's pretty much all the greens and the uh, celery. Oh, we got some romaine. This little romaine heart part we could just probably put in 
you know, by itself, no problem. Next, we're going to go ahead and drop in that lemon and use that lemon to try to scoop off, all, scoop into the shoot of the machine all that little juice and uh, pulp that we put in from the strainer basket. Next, we're going to follow that by the apple. And you also want to always take a look down the feed chute. You know, if there's a lot of stuff inside the machine and it's not moving through, that's an indicator that, you know, your feed chute is clogged up. I mean, it should look fairly empty. Now, there will always be some residual produce in there, but if it's really full, then you know there's a problem. The last thing you always want to juice in the Omega Vert is like a carrot or, you know, something like the cucumber or a nice handful of celery or some apples to help push through whatever else used to be in the juicer. Uh, some of the last item that you put in also will not get juiced because simply the Omega Vert works by the, uh, the, the last thing you put in is going to help push in the thing before that you put in. So I uh, hope you follow that. <laughs> so now while it is juicing a lot of the cucumber, some of the cucumber will be left in the machine. As you can see, our pulp is still flowing out and actually flowing over the collection jug. We, we made actually quite a bit of juice today here. So we'll check it out. We're totally done with all the produce that we juiced. Pulp is still uh, slowly coming out of the machine after you put that last bit of produce and you want to let the machine run for a little bit. If you put it in, turn it off, then you're going to have a lot more of unjuiced items in the machine than if you let it run, I don't know, maybe a minute or two and let all the pulp stop flowing. When the pulp stops flowing, that's an indicator to you that the machine is done juicing. Also, another indicator is when the juicer stops dripping or stops putting out juice in your collection cup. So I think we're at a nice stopping point. We're going to go ahead and turn the machine off. Once again, uh, this strainer basket has strained out the rest of the pulp that did uh, get into the machine. We could, uh, I'm going to probably rotate this around a little bit. And sometimes just for fun, I could put this back in the machine one more time, but it's really not going to be too effective because for the most part, it really needs something hard and fibrous after this stuff to help move this stuff through the machine. So I probably wouldn't recommend uh, rejuicing this last stuff right here. We're going to go ahead and just kind of put that out or compost that with the pulp there. Now what I want to show you guys next is inside the machine. Now this is a very important indicator to let you know that your machine is working properly and that you're using it properly or not. So we're going to go ahead and take this machine apart. And uh, if you take this machine apart and it's filled with pulp, that's an indicator that you're feeding things too quickly and it got backed up. Another indicator is if inside here there's a lot of pulp. I mean pretty much there's a little bit of pulp on the auger, not much. I mean this is pretty much about normal and there's a little bit of pulp in here. Another sign that it's jammed up is right here where the pulp comes out is like if it's really stuck up with a lot of strings. I mean, here's some strings that did get stuck in the, in the uh, outlet port. This outlet port's actually very small, but as you know, the pulp is still flowing. So I did a fairly good job with this uh, juice recipe in the Omega Vert by feeding it the method that I did. Of course, another indicator to let you know if you did a good job or not is once you remove the juicing bowl, you want to look down on your juicer right here. Uh, if there is a lot of juice in this area, that means you're not doing something properly. Maybe you're feeding things too fast. Maybe you didn't pre-cut things up too much. You know, those are some of the indicators that it's not working. Because what happens is, if there's juice in this area, it's mainly getting there from two places. Uh, number one, there's a seal on the bottom. And uh, juice will come out this seal on the bottom if and only if like the, the juice can't go anywhere else because the pulp outlet port is blocked. Another reason for uh, juice on the body here, which you shouldn't have for the most part, is if you forgot to put this yellow flap in. If you leave this flap off, then the pulp and the juice are going to come out of this thing. Sometimes if your pulp outlet gets too blocked up, it'll literally push this little flap out, which once again means you're not doing something right probably Pre, not pre-cutting properly or feeding things too fast. Well, I mean, that's pretty much it. Let's see, I got the juice here, and just that amount of produce in that recipe made, man, this made like a whole four cups of juice. I probably should have got a bigger collection pitcher. 
Now, you know, there is some foam in this juice, and you know what? Every juicer will produce foam. Some produces more than others. Of course, with the Omega Vert, if you tend to juice a lot of leafy greens without the carrots and whatnot, then the foam is going to be more than if you um, are juicing it with the carrots. So once again, on a recipe like this, you know, you could go with the Omega Vert. It's going to do it fine, as you just saw. It, it does make it a little bit of foamy, and you're going to have to catch it with a strainer if you don't want the extra pulp. The Omega 8004 or 8006 might be a better juicer for this exact combination. But once again, if you want to juice fruits, this is going to, the vert is going to do fruits better than the 8006. There's so many pros and cons when selecting any juicer, and that's why I make a lot of videos and put on YouTube so that you can see me juicing a wide variety of produce in the different machines to see it's how it's going to work before you get it, or if you already have the juicer, you can see how I juice in the machines so that you can obtain the same exact results as I do every single time. So now the moment I've been waiting for, I get to try that juice. Mmm, after using the strainer, it's a fairly pulp-free juice. Definitely tastes good. I can taste the green, I can taste the ginger, taste the lemon. Uh, normally I'd maybe put half a lemon in here and I'd add an extra apple or two or three and probably add more cucumber and celery too. I like to dilute my greens down a fair bit more than this. So by tweaking the recipe, you could probably get this recipe to work better in the Omega Vert. Or if not, this is what you're going to get. That's the amount of foam you're going to get and that's the amount of pulp you're going to get. You saw it here first. Now, after watching this video, hopefully you know how the Omega Vert Juicer works and how you can make it work more effectively for you. Once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.